a wartime president.
thank the Lord how he did for the child. Thank the last night. By trusting she did tonight. For our overseer, I mean, right. Amen. Amen.
you are tremendously
bless the Lord tonight. Thank you. God bless you for coming and sharing our day and our holy convocation you were here before. And we're glad to have you come back with us today. Isn't it good to see everybody in the house of the Lord? Let's just go away real quick. Hey, man, it the last night. I didn't get to speak to many of you. So I'm glad to see you tonight. Now we get ready for the word of God. That we have our future. That we are very familiar with. An introduction. Most of us have known him all his life before he even knew himself. Praise God. Before he knew what prayer and what preaching was about. And then when he began to find out, he wanted to preach from the very beginning. Preaching in the basement. Preaching in the kitchen. Preaching in the bedroom. Preaching in the living room. Now he's preaching in our pulpit. Pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Let's go to Joel. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse uh, 28 says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I want to preach from the sermonic topic, the latter day revival. The latter day revival. <sighs> mm, help me, Holy Ghost, here. We have combined, combined a revival to a three day gathering. 
with guest preachers and fancy clothes like we got on tonight and good singing. But true revival goes beyond that. Revival is the outpouring of, of God's spirit. And our focal text today was found in the book of Acts and those in the upper room had just received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Peter is preaching to those who had questions, comments, and concerns. In his sermon, he reflects on what Joel said. And I want to deal with what Peter is saying and how it catches up with us in the 21st century. I want to examine when will the latter day revival happen, what will happen, and who will it happen to. I'm going to give you the disclaimer now. You may not shout off, off of my message if you ain't saved. So I need you to come on up. If you ain't saved, you might not get happy off of this. Oh, the latter day revival will happen in the last days. Uh, uh, you may not want to hear this, but it is true. We are in the last days. And I know people have been saying, I've been hearing this all my life. And people have been saying this all my life. But don't you see the scriptures being fulfilled and the scriptures being unfolded? Oh my God, don't you see it right before your eyes? And I would hear the saints growing up saying, we live in perilous times. Or they would stand up and testify and say, pray much for me that I'll be all that God desires of me to be in these last and evil days. And I didn't understand what they really meant when I was younger because I'm like, Oh, uh, all right. What is perilous times? That's a pretty big word. Uh, but they meant we're living in dangerous times. The last days are dangerous times. It is biblical. What they said was biblical. Second Timothy 3, Paul tells us, and one thing that you should know is that the last days shall bring perilous times. Then Paul starts to tell us what to look for, what's the signs of the time. And he would say, people will be lovers of themselves. So they will be boastful, they will be proud, they will be disobedient, they will be unfaithful, they will be unholy, they will be without affection, they will be false accusers, they will be despisers of those that are good, they will be lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, that they will have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Oh, help me here, Holy Ghost. And then, Paul even says that there will be some who depart from the faith and give themselves over to ungodly things. But then he said that God shall see their conscience with an eye. What does that mean? Huh. They'll become desensitized to conviction. They'll become desensitized to sin. They'll be able to live in your kind of way and won't feel anything. I know you may say this is not a convocation message, but you need to get your soul right with God. Uh, Paul, Paul wrote in Romans, but they did not acknowledge God in their ways, and he gave them over to a reprobate mind, a mind that has no consciousness to do the will of God. Yeah. That's only what Paul had to say. I ain't even tell y'all what Jesus said yet. Jesus said in Matthew that when the time comes, there shall be wars and rumors of wars. Ah, yeah. Don't y'all see it? Y'all see what I'm talking about now? There shall be wars and rumors of wars. Who ever known a president to say they, they want to lock him up? There shall be wars and rumors of wars. Come on, church. Hallelujah. There shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake and diamond places. I don't know how many people keep up with what's going on in the world, but I do. If you look in Africa, there is a swirl of flies and pestilence going on. So much so that they can't control it. Come on, pestilence and diamond places. Come on. You think COVID was just something to hit your body and make you can't breathe? No. COVID is a part of the end time. The Bible says that the gospel has to be preached to all nations. What happened during COVID? We got locked at our church and everything had to go online. Everybody almost got internet. If you don't got internet, you ain't with the time. Everybody. So everybody was starting to hear the gospel. Come on, you, you got to know the scripture. It's been fulfilled. <laughs> Jesus says something after he talks about this. He says something. And I had that thing, huh? <laughs> it made me excited. I literally did that when I thought about it. He said that he that endured till the end, the same shall be saved. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm determined I'm going to endure till the end. I'm determined I'm going to run on to see what the end is going to be, church. He said, he that endured till the end, the same shall 
about being saved. Church, let me tell you, y'all gonna say he is crazy. I get excited when I talk about the end times. And if you don't get excited, you might need to go back to the altar. Because what is my living if I don't want to see Jesus? What am I living for if I don't want to see Jesus? That's what the end times is about. It's about getting one step closer to seeing Jesus. I get excited to hear the scriptures being fulfilled. Why? Because I know that there's I one step closer to hearing that trumpet sound. I one step closer to hear the trump sound and seeing the dead in Christ arising. Those who remain, we will be caught up in the rapture. I know I one step closer to seeing Jesus. I one step closer to see the mansions that He talked about. He said, "In my Father's house are many mansions." I one step closer to walking on the gold streets. I one step closer to seeing the crystal. See, I'm one step closer to seeing the tree that had the hill of the leaf for the healing of the nations. I'm just one step closer. Every day I'm like, I'm one step closer. I'm one step closer. Amen. And if you got scared, you might not be ready. Amen. If you don't like this kind of preaching, you might need to hit the altar tonight. Amen. Ah, Jesus. Because our living, we're living to see Jesus. Amen. And if you ain't living to see Jesus, you really ain't living nothing at all. We're living to see Jesus. I got one question to ask you. If Jesus was the crack of sky right now, where would you spend eternity? Take a minute and think about
because a lot of people want to miss over this part. You got to be sanctified and convert. Y'all don't sound too excited about this, but that's okay. I, I'm not really pumped. I'm not. I understand what Pastor Brother used to say when she said, "I'm not preaching to make you excited. I'm preaching to get you into heaven." I, Pastor, I think I under really understand that. Um, because you got to be sanctified. Somebody say sanctified. Sanctification does not mean perfection. Ah, uh, my grandmother, when I got saved, my grandmother told me, "Oh, we don't expect you to be perfect." But sanctification does not mean you're gonna cross every T and die every night. Sanctification means that every day I'm trying better to be than I was yesterday. Every day I'm trying better to be more like Jesus. Every day I'm taking the right step in the right direction to be more like Jesus. Sanctification means that the Bible says we start crucifying our flesh daily. It is during this time where you turn from the way of the world. Bring your mind here, say, in the word. I see too many people looking. You need to be in the word. You can't get the Holy Ghost looking at crying babies. You only get it when you're in the word. Uh, let me just talk to y'all there. Uh, uh, so, sanctification, you start denying yourself the pleasures of the world. Yes. Sanctification, when I wanted to be sanctified, I had to block numbers. Because I was friends with people who was in the same bondage that I was in. So what sense did that make for me to keep hanging out with you and you in the same thing I'm trying to get out of? That's crazy. When I was sanctified, when I wanted to sanctify myself, I had to delete people off of Facebook that was doing too much cussing and posting too much stuff. Because that stuff started being fed into my spirit, man. When I wanted to be sanctified, I had to turn off some conversations and turn
you got to catch it in the spirit, church. Because we and liquor will give you a hangover, but the Holy Ghost will give you a hangover. We and liquor will give you a hangover. Oh, 
pour out his spirit on you as it was the day of Pentecost. And those who already have the Holy Ghost, there's nothing wrong with asking God to refill me. Yeah. Ain't nothing asking God, Lord, I want to go down for another dip. I want to, I want another refilling of the Holy Ghost. I think about that song all the time. Even me, Lord, even me, Lord. Let some drop. Now follow me. Because although I already got it, I still need God to pour. I did it. All right. 
I didn't question God. I didn't, yeah, that's right, Sister Janet. That was Janet. Quick fast in her. Um, whatever told, the Lord told me to say, I, most times I said it. And then I started thinking, when I would fall out, you know, y'all know when I would have my little fits, why would they happen so much? And that's because I didn't want to say what the Lord wanted me to say. So God had to literally knock me out in order for me to do his will. Come on, it won't happen to you. God had to pick me up in order for me to say what he wanted me to say. As I begin to learn and grow in Christ, I, I, I can tell y'all what happened. Along the way, we became too intellectual with our faith. We started thinking too much about our, you know, what, what should be, what shouldn't be. We started, you know, especially in smaller Pentecostal groups, we tried to catch up with what the mega churches and those who were getting more members did. We started becoming too intellectual in our faith and we lost something along the way. We lost the word surrender. We lost surrender. We lost surrender. It's the truth. Because all the shouting and dancing we do, and don't nobody give their life to Christ, and don't nobody surrender, what is, you know, it profits us to give God the praise. But what really makes God excited is when a soul gets saved. The Bible says that the angels rejoice even over one soul. We lost surrender. We lost, I remember growing up, we were saying, I'm yours, Lord, everything I'm not. You don't gotta play, I just wanna say that everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord, try me now and see. See if I can be, and be yours. We lost surrender. We lost how to give it up to God. We lost, you can give me something nice now. We lost singing songs like, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. When you want the Spirit of the Lord, you got to be willing to give up everything to follow Jesus. you got to learn how to take up your cross to follow Jesus. When you want to be more like Christ, sometimes, even family members, you got to say, I'll come around you but for so long because I know that we're not on alignment in the Spirit. You may not see the best for me, but I want to be all that God has for me to be. You gotta know, I gotta give up the pleasures of the world in order to be like Jesus. This is the last days. And we're in the latter day revival. I didn't come to make you shout. I mean, although y'all did shout, I did not come to make y'all shout. I wanted you to think that this is the end times and that we have to get ourselves to that church. Let's stand on your feet tonight. I don't want to take it for granted that everybody is saying. I can't really do altar call like I wanted you to be on top of it. But if there's one here tonight that says, I have something I want to surrender to God, just lift up a finger. Just lift up a finger. That says, one, I got something I need to give up to God. And I know it's blocking me from receiving the Holy Ghost. You just got to lift up a finger and be on top of it. Break it down. Lord, what can I ask you, God? God, I ask you that this word find a lot of you. And somebody's heart tonight, oh God. God, that somebody will surrender it up to you, God. That somebody tonight will have a made up mind. That God, I want to be like you, God. God, I want to be more like you. God, I give up everything to follow you, God.